at close to $100,000 in cash. In the mood for hot coffee? When you are, nothing else will satisfy. How can you kill me? I'm already dead. Rap Radio. We know there's more to your favorite bands than their big hits. That's why the rap rocks more deep cuts from more of your favorite bands. Bye bye binoculars and Macintosh. Everything is just great. I take elocution, learn to speak posh, but still I can't find a mate. Be popular, learn to play the guitar. In 70s you could be strumming. Be sociable, learn kissing technique. Look out, there's a monster coming. This is no country club. This is a nudist camp. Riptides, Friday the 13th. Believe in the boogeyman. Remark Radio, the world's original all horror broadcast. Shocking, shameless, provocative, arousing. Welcome to Real World Radio, fiends. Welcome to the show. Thanks for tuning in. Yes, 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 yes. It's me, your host, the voice of a dead generation, Doom Dragomir. Do what you love and what you're proud of, and you are fucking bulletproof. You're fucking bulletproof. If you do what you absolutely believe to be right, you're fucking bulletproof. This week on a broadcast... 
poor girl, yeah, well, she did have a flu, and I didn't particularly want to uh, French kiss her. Yeah, but, you know, uh, <laughs> Cronenbergs loves bodily fluids. <laughs> They're all over the place. Star of Shivers and Black Sunday, legendary scream queen Barbara Steele returns. Hit me, hit me, hit me, please. Our blood spattered guy spends 66 seconds with Bless Your Grave, and the caustic critic square off against Bill Zabub's Night of the Pumpkin. If you don't want me to bring in my famous jack o' lanterns to your stupid party, I guess I'll just have to use them to decorate my own house. Terror tunes on route this week from Shockabilly. We got Typo Negative Forever Dead Mission Creeps plus tons more fun to come. You'll enjoy the show more while you're enjoying steaming hot coffee. Let's go. It's Season of Sin, a little surfing dead now, baby, on your home for horror, raw tea, and roll for more. seconds to go. When contacted for comment, the newly deceased Peter Steele had this to say. Peter Steele, legendary gothic metal frontman for Typo Negative Dead at the age of 48. We'll have more on that next week, but in the meantime, here's a classic cut from Typo Black number one on Rumor Radio. Now it's all hollow Eve. The moon is full. But will she trick or treat? I bet she will She will Those for round two 
smells like burning leaves But every day is all So first of all, what is the state of the Church of Satan? I was going to ask you about Wes Craven, and now I'm ashamed to. Less Messman style. Possibly the Antichrist. Like a zombie character on Sesame Street. All of a sudden it seems so irrelevant. Continue. I speak nothing but the fucking English language. And if that's infamous, then ha ha ha. Tough titters. All right, this is Feedback with part two of our Q&A with legendary scream queen Barbara Steele, recorded at the 2009 Festival of Fear and moderated by rumor contributor Sean Plummer, a.k.a. the Dark Lord Bunnykins. There's a, you had something of a renaissance in the 70s with younger directors, as I mentioned, Scotland. Yeah, Dean. well, Jonathan Demme jumped out of a... I'm walking down the street one day and Jonathan Demme... This man jumps out of a magnificent sort of blue Chevy with vast fins, great silver tips, and says, what are you doing? What are you doing? I said, what do you mean, what am I doing? He says, well, you know, I'm starting a movie in two days. I'd like you to be in it. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, oh, well, great. Why not? Fine. Who are you? And, uh, and of course, he worked with uh, Toronto's own David Cronenberg for yes. Shivers. Ooh. And I'm really sorry that we didn't show Shivers the other night as opposed to Black Sunday, because here we are in Toronto, and I think it's a wonderful movie, and it would have been just great to see. I'd love to see it, actually, on a big screen. Bloodthirsty creatures that must be killed are incarnations of absolute evil. <coughs> they possess men, women, and children, and drive them to acts of unbelievable horror. No one is safe from them. No power on earth can stop them. The only escape is death. 
his his films, even from the beginning, were very very sophisticated in terms very of the, the themes and whatnot. Did you have a sense that this was you know an A-list you director? Could, well, no, in you, the making, you could feel absolutely that he's intensely intelligent and very focused. Yeah. But how, um, what was that shoot like? I, I, there was a one uh, story anecdote from one of your uh, recent interviews for, I think for Nightmare Castle, where you mentioned having to, if you've, if you've seen the film, um, Mastillo plays uh, Betts, a predatory lesbian, who uh, passes on a uh, sexually transmitted thing to another woman, and apparently she uh, had a vicious flu at that, po at that point? Poor girl, yeah, well she did have a flu, and I didn't particularly want to uh, French kiss her, yeah, but you know, uh, <laughs> Cronenbergs loves bodily fluids. <laughs> They're all over the place. So, um, uh, yes, and somebody said to me, was it yesterday or that somebody said, you know, she asked him to hit her so that she could cry. Uh, hit me, hit me, hit me, please, I'll cry better, I'll cry better. And you spent uh, the 80s, part of the 80s working with Dan Curtis, who did Dark Shadows, of course, and uh, you starred in the revival. What did you, what did you, uh, had you what, what, been familiar with Dark Shadows? No, I hadn't, I'd never seen it. But I did uh, these two vast miniseries with him as a producer because I was working for a while at Paramount in, in development. And, uh, and then we did Dark Shadows. And I was not happy on Dark Shadows because, oh. no, no, because um, <sighs> uh, he did not allow me to be eccentric at all. He really was very much concerned with, you know, the angle I put the syringe in or something. And I actually quit in the middle one day. I just said, well, I'm sorry, Dan, I'm off the set and out of here. And uh, I can't handle this, you know. Uh, either you have to let me, let me express myself or, or I just can't do this, you know. Which is very strange because I had this very long friendship with him. And um, then we settled down. And then uh, other directors directed d different episodes, you know. Which uh, films of yours do you Tim feel? Tim Burton's doing Dark Shadows now, you know. We've heard, yes. Yeah, with Johnny Depp. Might, uh, might there great, be a role? Hmm? For, might there be a role for you, do you think? Well, Would you be interested? That would be nice, but I, I, I like that a lot. <laughs> Anybody want to see that? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Questions from the audience? And the question is talking about uh, working on Michael Reeves, sorry, Michael Reeves, right? So Michael Reeves, uh, She Beastie, did Witchfinder General, which was shot in Romania or somewhere no, like that? It was shot in Rome. Oh, was it? Okay. Mm -hmm. And the rumor that it was a ramshackle production, which if you actually see the film, which is recently released, I think by Dark Sky, they do talk about that on the co your commentary yeah, track. Yeah, I was under contract for 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw the producer the other day, Paul Maslansky. Yeah, and I was under contract for 24 hours in which they worked me, you know, they were still doing close-ups after 21 hours. And, uh, yeah, and I, I don't know, the production must have taken four days, maybe five. It looks like it. it's a very strange mix of comedy and horror. It is. They should have made, uh, that's, you're absolutely right, and they should have just stuck with horror. Really? Just I one mean, or yeah, the other? Uh, yeah, and then Paul Maslansky threw himself into the movie, sort of playing some kind of crazy cop with a hat on or something. <laughs> Again, it's on Dark Side DVD if you want to check it out. It's interesting. <laughs> and, the, and the question is talking about forging a new role for women in horror. No, I didn't have a sense that, uh, that I was forging a new role. I, I don't like to play the victim. I'm not an appropriate victim. <laughs> And uh, so I'll fight to the end, you know, but uh, so maybe they just intuited that. I do, it's tough, it was tough to a degree. I don't like to scream either because I realized once I lived in Rome right opposite the Pope's bedroom, right. <laughs> oh. Here is the Vatican and there's the Pope's bedroom there. And then I lived in this house which was full of cardinals, you know, <laughs> right here. And uh, that's irrelevant, actually, that it's beside the... Per I mean, anyway, <laughs> I lived in this house full of cardinals. I mean, I'm the only female in this house full of cardinals. And there was this glorious terrace all around, like it's on the top floor. And then one night, I'm in bed and everything is open because it's very hot in Rome in the summer. 
and I see my the thing. It's a classic kind of classic. And of course, I see my the thing in my bedroom door go down like this, very silently. And I realize that I have been overreacting my entire life as an actress. Because in any horror film, they'd have you go, oh, oh, <laughs> and the actual fact, what happens is you're just stunned with terror. You're lying naked on a hot night, and there's a bloody door going down like this, and you're in a house full of cardinals. And <laughs> it happens. <laughs> I flung myself into the bathroom and waited for dawn. <laughs> Big thanks to Andy Treefenbach from the Destroy the Brain podcast for recording this Q&A. You can check him out online at www.destroythebrain.com. Also, the 2010 Festival of Fear lineup will be unveiled at Rue Morgue's 100th issue party at the Revival Club in Toronto on Friday, May the 7th. But if you're not able to attend, then have no fear, because we'll be revealing the lineup right here on Rue Morgue Radio on the very same day. In fact, this is where you'll hear the news first. So don't forget to tune in that week and every week right here on the two-time award-winning Rondo Hatton Horror Podcast, the originators of horror radio, www.rumorgradio. Dot com. Rue Morg Radio. Hey ho, have you heard about a show called Rue Morg Radio? Weird waves and spooky tone. Radio for ghouls, not radio for chones. Radio for ghouls, not radio for chones. Orally stunning. Find out what's going on on the the, uh, the wacky world of horror. Yes, horror happenings with our little leprechaun. Hey, Shannon, what's happening? Well, tomb is crushed now that Liz Taylor is engaged for the ninth time to a fiance. He was sort of hoping it would be him. I think because he just wanted to stuff her and prop her up in his games room. Can you? How can he even afford a games room? Is what I want to know. Hey everyone, I'm Shannon, and I've got what's happening horror-wise from around the world. The fourth annual A Night of Horror International Film Festival is on now until the 23rd at Dendi Newton Cinema and other theaters in Sydney, Australia. And tickets are on sale now through Dendi Cinema Newton, dendi.com.au. April 22nd is the Troma 35th anniversary with Lloyd Kaufman in attendance at the New Beverly Theater in Los Angeles, California. At 7.30, they'll be showing The Toxic Avenger and at 9.30, Poultry Guys Night of the Chicken. Tickets just $7. Go to newbevcinema.com for details. And help Rue Morgue celebrate Black 100 with a party to die for May 7th at Revival Event Theater in Toronto. Doors open at 10. The Suicide Girls will be there along with the sounds of Squid Lid and music from DJ Shannon and DJ Lamort. And they'll be unveiling the official guest list for the Rue Morgue Festival of Beer. Tickets are just $20. Go to the Rue Morgue Celebrates Black 100 Facebook page for more. And if you know of something that's happening horror-wise, just send me an email, shannon at rumorgradio.com. Oh, yeah, that's right. All right, thanks, Shannon. Now it's time for the fake news. And now for the news. The planet Mars has exploded. 
Martian spaceships are heading toward Earth. We can hear them inside their ships. But what of the human element? I believe in UFOs. I am seeing UFOs. I am seeing UFOs. We're here in Washington where the spaceships are now landing. The Martians are marching out of the first spaceship. The president is about to speak to the Martian leader. Last night I was digging in the cemetery. Up jumps a man, all black and hairy. The president has angered the Martians because they have no hair. Wait, they've grabbed the president. We can hear him now. La 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 la, let me go. La 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 la, let me go. Let me go, let me go. The Martian leader is threatening the president. Give me the deed to your ranch, I'll blow you all to bits. We return you now to our studios. Here is a bulletin. The government has decided if the Martians are to remain on Earth, they must go to school. Rock, 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 high school. Good day, welcome to school. I'm Principal uh, Bob McKenzie. Today, we're not going to have the... Uh, uh, national anthem of the Lord's Prayer. Instead, we're going to have our theme. The new principal tries to stop the music, but the kids take over and rock the roof off the school. There they go, marching back to their spaceship. It looks like the leader of the Martians has one last word to the president. You, stupid human, are listening to Rue Morgue Radio. Stay tuned, fiends. We've got the blood spattered guide. 66 seconds with bless your grave coming right up. After these words, don't touch that dial. It's covered in deadly poison. First the blackout filled our world. And now the darkness is upon us. And the darkness has spawned the shaitan. Fools say the shaitan are just people who are driven mad by the second blackout. They're wrong. Shaitan can't be purified. We are at war, and the Shaitan must be stopped at all costs. Will you join us? Join the Brotherhood at www.medallionpress.com. Blood is the key to life. You pity the humans, don't you? But what happens when the supply... Less than 5% of the human population remain. ...can't meet the demand. Daybreakers, quiet May 11th. Hi, I'm Peter Sperry. I'm Michael Sperry. I'm Steve Boyle from Daybreakers. 
And you're listening to Rue Morgue Radio. Thank I you. love that banana. <laughs> Hello, I'm Lisa Ladoussard. I'm your blood-spattered guide to music on Rue Morgue Radio, and I love talking about new bands, especially when they remind me of my favorite old bands. One out right now that fits that is Bless Your Grave or Blessure Grave. It means serious injury in French, and they do very doomy, claustrophobic, heavily Joy Division-influenced post-punk goth music for hipsters. A few weeks ago, I spoke with the leader Tobias Graves about their new full-length record, Judged by 12, Carried by 6. And while I had him on the phone, I couldn't let him go without probing him for 60 sick seconds. Sixty six seconds. Are you ready? I'm ready. First off, tell me, what is the scariest thing about San Diego? The hipsters. You stupid hipster doofus! <laughs> tell me about your favorite Halloween costume. My favorite Halloween costume was when I went as the mummy, and I was probably about nine years old, and we cut up bed sheets and really did a great job on it. And it was the most in character that I've ever felt. I'm a mummy. I scare people. Watch what happens when I walk up to somebody. I'm a mummy. In your band when you're on tour, what's your poison? Good food is what we're all most drawn to on tour. Don't believe all you hear about heart disease, mad cow, cancer, osteoporosis, kidney stones, obesity, food poisoning, and the excessive use of antibiotics, to name a few. We here at Farmer Tom's One Town Family Owned Corporation care about your health and safety. That's why we feed our animals with only the safest rendered ingredients. The truth is, our animals have the finest of living conditions, approved by our very own inspectors. Farmer Tom's fresh flesh is what makes our children strong. What's in your gothic toolkit? Uh, my gothic toolkit is one black button-down shirt, a pair of black pants and black vans, no eyeliner, no hair accessories. That's about it. Finally, Tobias, what is your band's evil plan for world domination? Uh, Our plan for world domination includes hanging out, enjoying the great weather down here, eating Mexican food, and releasing records. Play with your records! Play with my records. That full-length record is out now and widely available from indie record retailers, but this band likes to put out a lot of special limited edition vinyl singles and stuff like that. Cool titles too, like Making the Deathbeds for Teenage Vampires, or a recent Split 7-inch had uh, Misfits cover of Skulls. They're all sold out, of course, that's why they're limited edition, but if you keep your eye on their website in MySpace, you'll hear about their upcoming releases. Right now, this is something from Judged by 12, Carried by 6. This is Blessure Grave and Stop Breathing on Rue Morgue Radio. Am I a hipster doofus? No. No. Said I'm not good looking enough for her. Not good looking. Jerry, look at me. Look at my face, huh? Am I beautiful?
receiving this broadcast as a dream. We are transmitting from the year 1999. You are receiving this broadcast in order to alter the events you are seeing. Our technology has not developed a transmitter strong enough to reach your conscious state of awareness. But this is not a dream. You are seeing what is actually occurring for the purpose of causality violation. This broadcast will be received by the perceptual centers as a dream. But this is not a dream. Shock Billy, when you dream about bleeding. The other night a friend of mine came to me in my dreams. His face was all covered with blood. His nose was all smashed in. Drops are falling on the ground Fabulously freaky. Rumor Radio is completely crazy. Rumor Radio is wonderfully weird. Horror wise, the songs are super. Death Clock.
butter sandwiches. I love peanut butter sandwiches. I love peanut butter sandwiches. I love butter sandwiches. I'm looking for some spirits. Give me your strongest whiskey. Our special today is an Allah Bama Slammer. Are you sure you would not like that instead? Sure. This looks familiar. Why is every liquid in a container like this for you people? It is a celebration of Ramadan. You can sing. Let us behold it. Ramadan done. Hypothetic critics, critics, critics. Controversial. Unrelenting. It's brutal. It's nasty. Sensational. The worst of the worst. Offend everyone equally. <laughs> boarding, boarding, boarding. They're real. The stuff shit scrapes off the bottom of its shoes. They're mean. So what was the actor's name? Oh, God, what a plank he is. They're here. Are you ready? It's time for the classic critics. All right, this is Feedback. And this is Last Chance Lance. This week, we're going to be looking at the latest effort of the new Jersey Devil himself, Mr. Bill Zabob. Don't mess with the devil, buddy! We're number one. We beat anybody. We're the devils! The devils! <laughs> Hail Satan! The self-proclaimed king of the B-movies, even though that's been hmm. Roger Corman's yeah. unofficial... Maybe King of Monica. the Zed movies. <laughs> Boom, roasted. Pretty much. His latest film is Night of the Pumpkin, available now through the artist's website and through various distribution outlets. Go to www.buildsabub.com for more information. And to sell your soul. And what did you think of Night of the Pumpkin? Loved it. Give us a brief, brief synopsis, because we have a lot to talk about. We today. do, okay. Um, super brief. Super brief. One uh, sentence or less. A pumpkin starts killing people at a school. Great. I like it. Barbara says she was next door at Peter's house, and while taking a shower, a giant pumpkin ate Peter. Now, how stupid do you think I am? I wasn't lying! Fuck you, and anyone who looks like you. Fred, are you listening to me? You know, and I know, that Barbara sometimes likes to drop acid. Maybe she's having a bad trip. It sounds like she's in a crisis moment. It's almost the antithesis of a Bills Above uh, movie because there's not very many nude scenes. There's not a lot of of stuff that he's stolen from other movies and just slapped in there. And it's got a. <laughs> well, that's kind of some of his aesthetic. He's been active for over a decade or about a decade. He's made a lot of these super, super low budget, almost DIY efforts that feature a lot of rape and humiliation of women. I guess that's been his bread and butter in films like Kill the Scream Queen. He recycles footage, like it ravaged the Scream Queen. I yep. think he uses footage from Kill totally. the Scream Queen. But um, Night of the Pumpkin, you consider to be... A maturing of A him. maturing. Yeah. I argue it's <laughs> a step back. Well, you, we wouldn't be doing this if we agreed on everything. Right. I'm rubber and you're glue. Whatever you say bounces off of me and sticks back to you. <laughs> Makes no sense. If I'm glue, words can't even get off of me in the first place. Good, let's keep it that way. <laughs> Tell right. me why it's a maturing of his aesthetic. It actually has a coherent plot line. The final girl at the end of the movie is actually smart and not just someone to be degraded and stripped down to you know, her naked body and poked and prodded at. And, um, you know, the effects and some of the scenes that were shot at night are still, you know, he's working on a mini micro budget. Uh, I, and he, I think he, he really brought it off really well. Wow, you're very kind. <laughs> okay. Now, you haven't seen Ass Monster. No, I didn't now, get a chance. we had Bill Zabub on the show quite some time ago talking about that film. I consider that to be his masterpiece or his magnum opus, if there is such a thing. <laughs> because it's him basically making fun of him himself he does that a making lot making fun of what he does though because it's about making one of these super low budget DIY softcore porn fests to basically pedal at horror conventions which is exactly what he does that's what he does so he's making fun of what he does so there's a self reflexivity to Ass Monster or Ass Monster and it's witty there's no way the movie we make is going to be as crappy as that thing we saw yesterday you break my camera I break your face Ooh. so tell me 
Am I pretty enough to be in your movie? Do, do you really think it's a good idea to have a metalhead in this movie? They're supposed to be scary. It's a horror movie. <sighs> I never knew a love like this was possible. You know, and that's the thing that kind of frustrates me sometimes with Bilzerbub is he's smarter and more intelligent and wittier than a lot of the films sort of end up becoming. Well, and you realize that when you when you actually get a chance to sit down and talk with him now. Granted, the first time I met him was at Chiller back in like 2004 or 2005, and he was completely blitzed. Right. And then when I interviewed him uh, at the Festival of Fear last year, I did a panel with him. Um, he was completely blitzed as well. But he is a smart guy, and he will go into diatribes against religion and po political mm -hmm. organizations and things. Uh, he may come off as being just this this you know blitz kid, heavy metal loser. But he is almost even the antithesis of that because well, he is so against racism. He is so against. Uh, he's actually against drugs, which is hard to believe. And but he he comes at it with a with an intelligent argument. Well, some of the films he's done that I think have branched away from that, you know, hardcore rape and humiliation genre subgenre that he's done, are films like the worst horror movie ever, which I consider to be his epic. Duh. And then you died, and you came back, and appeared before your apostles, right? Are uh, you reading out of the obvious book? Maybe you should read out of the obvious book! It's got outlandish special effects in it, um, or a reasonable facsimile therein. He basically <laughs> throws everything at you in, the, in this movie. Every archetype, vampires, werewolves, zombies, 50-foot women. He's got the military in there. Yeah. And alongside that, he takes pot shots at every religion, every kind of taboo. There's some genuinely funny moments in that film. Jesus Christ coming off the cross and then jerking off using the hole in the middle yeah. of his hand. That's nasty. That's classic stuff. For me, Night of the Pumpkin is a couple of steps back because it never achieves the grand, absurd, bonkers vision of the worst horror movie ever. It's not as clever and as self-reflexive as Ass Monster. If it's an attempt to make a more straight-up genre piece... Which I think it is. Yeah, it doesn't pull it off. It, it doesn't surpass what he's already done. Well, what I think is, and, and I know we've talked about this before, the reason why he makes those kinds of movies, and movies that a lot of guys like to go home and jerk off to, is because he likes to go home and jerk off to those kind of movies, and so yeah. he makes them himself. Oh, this is a champion one. Oh, yeah. yeah. You listening? Yeah, I'm going He's blind. doing it. Oh, I'm real. But I think that in the back there, that he was always like, I wish I could put together just a real good, straightforward horror movie and not have to rely on all of this stuff from the past, and that's what Night of the Pumpkin is. But I am going to pick up on something you said, and this is what I celebrate Bills Above for, because I'm often castigating filmmakers for basically creating lurid exploitation fear and pretending that there's some greater, higher moral purpose for it. He doesn't pretend. He doesn't pretend. Bills Above stuff comes from an honest place. He's totally unapologetic about his voyeuristic perversions. If and in fact, the audience is almost an afterthought, let's face it. <laughs> I hope by honest place you mean his nutsack, because that's the only place I see these movies coming from. So until next time, this is Feedback. And this is Last Chance Lance saying, Hail Satan! This is a wild animal. You can't treat it like a person. No, he's happy. His costume is hiding his erection. Well, as a child, I had a prize pig that I thought was my best friend. But then one day I picked up one of her piglets. She went crazy. She bit off my nutsack that I kept tied around my belt to feed squirrels. Ah, uh, nutsack. Here's the mission creeps. Headstone. Walking by this field stone, another place I don't belong. Walking by with no records, the crackles are perched in black. Now I'm feeling transparent and stupid. I'm turning around and falling away. My head is so heavy. One living to break and say, I take a walk. I take a walk. Walking by with no 
Except in the winds in time To return the Some healing, some feeling I'm needing a way Through a puzzle in it One step now, it's clearer How was I slain? And I take a walk I take a walk on by I take a walk on by Twitter is and have no desire to find out. Until next time, fiend. Until next time, fiends. This is Tomb Dragoneer signing off, saying, "See you around, like a record." Vampires, werewolves, zombies, 50-foot women. Damn right. 